had iPads and bars, but the book reading teachers had none upon bars. Those devices weren't so big. They were really so small. You might think that such a thing wouldn't matter at all. Since they had devices, all the device-carrying sneetchers would brag, We're the best kind of sneetch on the beaches! With their snoops in the air, they would sniff and they'd snort. We'll have nothing to do with the book-reading sort. And whenever they met some, when they were out walking, they'd hike right on past them without even talking. When the device-carrying children went out to play ball, could a book reader get in the game? Not at all. You only could play if you had iPads and bars, and the book reading children had none upon those. When the device carrying children had frankfurter roasts, or picnics, or parties, or marshmallow toasts, they never invited the book reading sneetchers. They left them out cold in the dark of the beaches. They kept them away, never let them come near, and that's how they treated them, year after year. Then one day, it seems, while the book-reading sneetchers were moping and doping along on the beaches, just sitting there wishing they had iPads and bars, a stranger zipped up in the strangest of cars. My friends, he announced in a voice clear and keen, my name is Silver Stone McApple McBean, and I've heard of your troubles, I've heard you're unhappy, but I can fix that, I'm the fix-it-up chappy. I've come here to help you, I have what you need, and my prices are low and I work at great speed, and my work is 100% guaranteed. Then quickly, Sylvester McGabble McBean put together a very peculiar machine, and he said, You want iPads like a device-carrying snitch? Well, my friends, you can have them! For three dollars each. Just give me your money, hop right aboard. So they clambered inside. Then the big machine roared, and it clumped, and it bumped, and it jerked, and it burped, and it bopped them about. But the thing really worked. When the book reading sneetchers popped up, they had bars. They actually did. They had bars upon bars. Then they yelled at the ones who had bars at the start. We're exactly like you. You can't tell us apart. We're all just the same now, you snooty old smarties. Now we can go to your Frankfurter parties. Good grief, groaned the ones who had bars at the first. We're still the bit snitches and they are the worst. But now, how in the world will we know? They all frowned. If which kind is what, or the other way round? Then up came Miguel with a very sly wink. And he said, things are not quite as bad as you think. So you don't know who's who. That is perfectly true. But come with me, friends. Do you know what I'll do? I'll make you again the best sneakers on the beaches. And all it will cost you is ten dollars each. <laughs> Belly bars are no longer in style, said McBean. What you need is a trip through my bar-off machine. Thus wondrous contraption will take off your bars so you won't look like snitches who have them on theirs. And that handy machine, working very precisely, removed all the bars from their tummies quite nicely. Then, with snoops in the air, they paraded about, and they opened their beaks, and they let out a shout, We know who is who! Now there isn't a doubt the best kind of snitches are snitches!
leeches without. Then, of course, those with bars got frightfully mad. To be wearing a bar now was frightfully bad. Then, of course, old Sylvester McCall McBean invited them into his bar machine. Then, of course, from then on, as you probably guess, things really got into a horrible mess. All the rest of that day, on those wild screaming beaches, the fix-it-up chappy kept fixing up sneeches. Off again, on again, in again, out again, through the machines they raced round and about again, changing their bars every minute or two. They kept paying money, they kept running through, until neither the plane nor the bar bellies knew whether this one was that one, or that one was this one, or which one was what one, or what one was who. Then, when every last cent of their money was spent, the fix-it-up chappy packed up and he went. And he laughed as he drove with his car up the beach. <laughs> a snitch. But McCann was quite wrong. I'm quite happy to say that the snitches got really quite smart on that day, the day they decided that snitches are snitches, and no kind of snitch is the best on the beaches. That day, all the snitches forgot about bars, and whether they had one or not upon the